Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, my name's Chris. This is Show Me Repair. And today, what we have in the shop is my John Deere tractor. And I feel like we're making a lot of videos on it, even though it's new to me, it shouldn't have to need any work. But being that it's a 94, and it's got over 3,000 hours on it, there's going to be some stuff that I need to do uh, to get maintenance up. That way I know it's done. And then I need to do... Um, Another thing, I need to add a third hydraulic adapter or fitting. Uh, I think some people call them auxiliary uh, hydraulic fittings. I think I'm, I was going to say I think what it is. I just went ahead and picked up the the installation manual and everything from John Deere. This is. I'll show you the part number in case um, you have a tractor like this and you need to look into doing this because I'm sh I don't I didn't get a quote on what it would cost to have this installed at my local John Deere dealership because I knew I was capable of doing this. So um, there's no electronics to it or anything. I don't need any special computer software. It's just going to be me taking it apart. It's called a single third SCV. So Scott. Chris, Victor, uh, SCV kit, and this will add a third hydraulic fittings to the rear of my tractor. So the two that are on my tractor right now, so I already have two, they run my loader, and I really don't want to take my loader off and do all that just to hook up a piece of equipment and run a single hydraulic ram on that piece of equipment because... Uh, I may do, I may take it off whenever I'm really doing hay just so it's one less thing I have to worry about when I'm running around the field. But again, I don't really want to have to worry about it. If I, if I need to hook up to something, I don't want to spend however long it takes to take the loader off. And that way it's just makes it easy for me, uh, I guess. Uh, the kit was kind of pricey, but from John Deere, I was surprised they were actually cheaper locally than me than any other company I could find. So any other company I could find that made a kit like this was, I think the cheapest one I saw was around thirteen to fifteen hundred dollars. From John Deere, it was eight hundred, and it's a kit. It comes with everything I need to install it. It comes with insulation instructions. Uh, it, it was perfect, exactly what I needed. So uh, this is kind of a no-brainer. So. I need to do an oil change and install this SCV kit. So let's knock out the oil change real quick and then we'll move on to the kit. Okay, we're gonna do the oil change and I think the oil fill, I think it's right here. Maybe. Sure looks like it. Let me go look on the other side real quick. Oh, I'm going to need to do a fuel filter, too. I got one of those. Okay, that is the oil fill right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, right here, filter is down here. I got the oil filter wrench on it already. I got a pan underneath. Ooh, that wasn't very tight, which doesn't have to be tight. That's actually pretty much perfect. And I think to... I'm going to keep track of this on uh, my phone when I did the oil change and kind of do a reminder for next year, if I haven't already, but I'm also going to write um, the amount of hours that I change it or what it needs to be. I don't know. What do you think I should do? Should I do the amount of hours I changed it at, or should I add 100 hours to it for the oil change service? I don't know. It's not cool. The actual threads are coming loose on the oil cooler side. So I need to tighten those up. Let's see what size those are. Yeah, it's a uh, 27. I really don't know what it is as standard because I don't think I have anything standard that size. Metric sockets always work for everything I need to do. So. Let 
Give me a brand new John Deere filter. Oh, it's upside down. You can see the part number. That's if you have, I think this oil filter works for the 52, 53, and 5400 because I think all three of those are three cylinder diesels like this. When you jump in the 5500, from what I've seen, it's a four cylinder, so it may take a different filter. But double check with your John Deere dealer. I'm gonna get a little bit of oil. And I might think about filling this with oil if I had to go straight up with it. But since I have to go in the side, I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, so I guess I need to get a smaller tripod because I can't get the camera low enough on the tripod to show this. But it uses a oiled drain plug, it uses a half inch drive. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. In my first time. Okay, so got oil for this. This is actually a new product from AMS Oil. It's their fleet, um, oh, heavy duty fleet oil. It's, I believe, I think it's a semi synthetic. It's a little bit lower cost, commercial grade formula for long life engine, blah, 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 complex blend of synthetic and conventional base oils. Yeah, so it, and it meets the CK4. It met, basically, I made sure that I made sure this met the requirements that John Deere wants for this engine. So I know it's this 1540 will work and it oil in my temperature range was 1540, but this is a little bit cheaper. And for this tractor, being the amount of hours it has on it, I figured I probably don't need to put some synthetic in it. Uh, who knows what people have ran before but I'm going to run this and I'm sure it'll be just fine. So, weird thing is, not weird, but difficult. I should have put the loader up and locked it, but the funnel's right here. So the fill is down here, or is it right here? And the fun my funnel reaches up here. So maybe I put another funnel up here, going down and I pour them, but boy, that's a lot of different stuff. Let me see, I might have to, Let's see if I climb up on this tire, if that makes it any easier. Probably not. Made it though. I'm making it. I'm making it. Woo, buddy. Okay, so this engine takes, and that's not going in very far. Oh gosh, I'm making a mess. That's a slow fill. Okay, so a little bit at a time. Uh, this engine takes nine quarts, and this is a ten quart jug, two and a half gallon. Let's see if we can go slow. We got a lot. Let's start it. sure it's not getting or it's raising as the oil drains back okay next I will do the uh, fuel filter I also picked up uh, from 
think it was, I ordered it through Amsoil, and you can get this on their website, AccuStrip. And ever since I started testing cooling systems in the 6.7 Power Stroke, you get a lot more, to me, you get more information with a test strip than you do with one of those, basically, uh, coolant testers with a needle in it, you know, and it floats and tells you the uh, freeze point in it if it's good. Well, this test strip, I know there's tons of these out here, but I figured I need something that can tell me what the uh, freeze point is of the coolant. And then this also tells you your uh, corrosion protection and then also your um, pH level. And the inner, the inner one there to my right, I believe that'd be your left. That is our pH level see there and that lighter green to me kind of goes with right about there well that is in the okay range what do you think you can see this these arrows here okay range then the middle pad Boy, I'm a little on the orange to orangish green. And that's telling me my reserve protection is not good. Uh, it actually wants to see, as you can see here. Let me get behind it. You can see the greener colors, it says is okay. The oranger colors, that it needs to be addressed. So... Um, I may drain the cooling system and then if we look it says red for blue coolants for red coolants and other coolants well I'm gonna do other because I think this is green this looks to me like it's uh, showing a hundred percent glycol level which says the freeze point is negative eight yeah negative eight so in my area that's pretty good so well actually hell I don't know anyway it's it could probably be more in the well it's showing a hundred percent well no it's got a little bit of orange to it yeah so we might be towards 50 60 percent so it two things showing that the coolant's not in the greatest shape probably wouldn't hurt for me to drain and fill the cooling system so I plan on doing that in a later time I may do a video on it it may not be that exciting so uh, next let's do the fuel filter hey we're on to doing the fuel filter now it's sitting right here uh, it's got a drain valve on the bottom I've got a hose connected to it so I'm going to try to loosen that valve up that way I can get most of the fuel out and drain without making big mess except I don't think I'm gonna do it nope it's leaking it's leaking I don't want it on I really don't want it on the starter there's a valve back here to shut off feed from the tank so I'm sure that helps then I was able to get the ring there's a plastic ring up here that you take loose and I was able to use this actually get this on that I can show you again pop that loose figure out how this I'm guessing it just wiggles off of there. Yep. Got a new John Deere filter. There's a part number if anybody needs to know it. Filter's already a little dented right here. But I'm sure it'll work fine. Okay, it already comes with the drain valve on the bottom. I just need to slip the ring around it. Get a little fuel and put it on this seal. Let's 
pretty easy. Put this on there, just give it a little bit of, there we are, last little bit. I think that's a better view of the fuel filter. Okay, so this is the check or the, oh, you can't see it. This is the valve to shut off the fuel tank. I'm gonna turn it back on. Okay, and then there's a valve up top to pump that. I don't know if anybody's familiar with uh, Duramax has this. Forgot. I'm sure a lot of other diesels have it, but it's to fill the fuel filter to prime the system. I need to prime it. Let's see. Let's see if it starts. Uh oh, hopefully this thing's not hard to start. Probably should have filled that fuel filter with some fuel, but. I actually didn't have any. Yeah, pumped on it some more. crack the lines. Oh, that feels a little different. Felt you could feel some resistance on the on it this go around. I'm sure one of you guys knows the trick to this. Make it go easier. I think the trick wouldn't have been filling the fuel filter with fuel. I'm gonna crack the fuel lines of the injectors and crank on it, and whenever I get fuel out, then I'll tighten them up. Okay, I'm gonna keep pumping and probably cracking lines again, and I'll, uh, I'll update you whenever I actually get it running, and I'll let you know what I did. Okay, we're back, new day. Got a little sleep, and did some research on what uh, I need to do to bleed this fuel system now that I changed the fuel filter. And I'm gonna walk you through it. So what I should have done yesterday was, the prime doesn't prime everything. I have to then first, this little bleeder screw right here, open it up, and you need to pump this until we get Fluid, clean, air-free fluid. Let me get a rag. Wow. Am I doing something wrong here? I may have introduced a ton of air to this system. Actually, off screen, I took this little suction thing and I put it up to this and started pulling a vacuum, kind of letting it do some sucking. That way, the pump didn't do all of it because maybe maybe my pump's bad and I need to get a new one. So I did that several times, and it seemed to help because now there we are. I could feel that pump start to stiffen up. We have good fuel there. Okay, now 
let me look at the instructions and see what's next. Okay, next we need, there's a bleed plug on this. I think it may be this one, but I need to look at the instructions again, which one it is. We have to pull a bleed plug there, and then I'll pump the that pump on top of the fuel filter, uh, fuel filter water separator, and we want to pump that until we get clean fuel out of there with no air. Okay, it's saying this bolt right here is our bleed plug. Okay, we're gonna leave that just loose. Too bad you couldn't tell me if it was coming out over there. Hopefully that's, well it's got a copper washer on it, so hopefully that's right, let's see. I still have good resistance on this pump over here. There's our feed line. Cracking that, I feel like that wouldn't do anything. I guess we could. May have been a good thing that we just did. Had some air come out of it. Yep, got quite a bit of fuel coming out of that. Maybe that helped get some air out of the system. Still nothing. Hard to believe that that's our. And that's what the direction workshop manual says. It's that. Well, actually, on the workshop manual, it's right there. But I don't feel anything on the other side. Okay, I've been. I broke this line loose again. I'm pumping, pumping, and didn't get anything. Well, then I just go ahead and stick this up there. Well, then fuel starts coming out. I didn't feel anything move. Let's see if, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Okay, now the next step is it wants me to crack the fuel lines at the injectors. Crank the engine at a high idle. So turn up the throttle sound. And let's see what happens. Let's hope the camera doesn't fall. I'm getting fuel. I'm getting more than last night. That's for sure. the Greco. That dog gets so excited over cranking engines. Um, okay, last night I couldn't get any fuel and tonight, or today, it is squirting fuel, especially from this one here. Still a little bubbles, but I'm going to let it cool down a little bit and then we'll we'll do it again. So, uh, it looks like we might be able to get this thing run. Okay, I don't know if you guys can, now that I look, I don't know if you guys can really see that well, but the injectors are down 
here I think you can see the return line you can definitely see it's down here this there's middle one one here and then one here yeah you can't see that front one we're gonna crank again doing good. I think that should be enough. Let's tighten these things up. Greco, it's okay. That dog. Something else. Okay, let's see what happens. I don't expect it to start right up, but... Okay, wow, that is an ordeal. Um, but that's pretty common on diesel engines that when you change the fuel filter, if you don't do the right uh, steps after you replace the fuel filter, you then have a no star condition. Um, I think if I would have had some clean diesel on hand, filled up the new filter, and just primed the filter, most likely it probably would have primed itself and worked properly. It's my experience in the past. I don't know what I was thinking to just throw an dry filter on it is what it is so we learned in the process i got to show you guys the process to bleed that so hopefully that helps somebody uh it'll be probably similar on other brands of tractors that way now you know hey there's bleeder stuff that i need to do and i know now from experience also i can help people out um i think that's most probably going to be it for the video i know we we're going to try to do the hydraulics the uh third auxiliary hydraulic connection at the rear but i think i'm going to do another video on that because I also want to change the coolant, so that'll give us something to do in that. So I appreciate everybody for sticking around, watching the video, seeing what happens, seeing uh, everything that, that goes on just in simple maintenance things sometimes. It doesn't always go as planned. Let me know what you think about this video, and I will see you in the next one. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time.